Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Uni Lopez, and you are watching or listening to The Pink Possibilities. I have the privilege to have a special guest that shares their Mary Kay journey and that are 100% true. So here's a little bit about our guest tonight. Kat is from Chicago, Illinois. She moved to Knoxville, Tennessee in 2016 with her husband, Rollin. They share four adult children, 10 grandkids and multiple grand animals. She was introduced to Mary Kay while working in the healthcare field. Her last position was the operating room supply coordinator at a large Chicago area hospital. She began her business in 1986 and debuted as a sales director just six years later. She earned 104 quarters of consistent customer service as a star consultant. She achieved the National Court of Sales five times, Princess Court several times, and has earned multiple medals for team building. She leads her unit to the circle of achievement four times she's done that. This year in the $350,000 unit club. Her most humbling reward was to be recognized by her peers for her servant leadership as the company monthly Miss Go Give. She is proud to lead the catalyst change agent taking action, real women with real hope for real change. They are finishing qualifications for their 18th career car. Wow. The prestigious pink Cadillac by June 30th. Her mission is to keep the flame of Mary Kay Ash's dream alive by passing on this opportunity by discovering, equipping, and mentoring emerging leaders to be and do all that God designed for them so they can have the life that he intended for them. So without further ado, please welcome the next Pink Cadillac sales drive driving director in Tennessee and Gallup Strength Clifton Strength Finders coach, Kat. Van Dusen. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for checking in. You know, as I'm sitting there and I'm listening to Uni tell a little bit of what we call in Mary Kay our accolades, is recognizing that um, you might not even know what any of that means. You know, and it's it's so um, you know like I, acronyms. Like I love acronyms. My daughter right now is uh, my grandson actually is in what they call CAP, which is the Civil Air Patrol. Well, Noah is 16 as of this day, and they live in Southern California. And I, like she'll talk to me, like I know what all of these acronyms mean. Well. What I would like to do right now is to have you take a big deep breath, whether you're a part of this incredible organization or you're even considering becoming a part of our organization. I'd love you to just take a big deep breath, relax, sit back and listen to my story just a little bit. And if you can relate it all, you know, just recognize that today is a new day and that you have a dream on your heart. Now you might not have dusted it off recently. You might not have even looked at it. Stuff has come in several years ago. We had the, you know, this, the C word that came in and was a major disruptor. And we all went through this gigantic change. Well, all I can tell you is I've been around for a little bit. So I'm going to tell you um, a little bit of my story and where I was and how God worked in my life. So I'm actually going to, in this first next couple minutes, I'm just going to read to you um, what I had put down in our legacy book, because the woman who introduced me to this culture of Mary Kay had no idea that 37 years later, I would be sitting here more excited, more determined, more assured that I'm at the right place at the right time for the right reason. 
and I believe you are too, whether you're watching live or whether you're listening to us later. So I'm just going to read this to you first, and then I'll tell you a little bit more. So with hindsight, I can see that God truly had a plan prepared for me. He was laying the foundation stone by stone through the many experiences that I've encountered in my life. And it's a lot. I had a big circle birthday this year. We'll talk about that in a minute. Maybe Mary Kay always said, if a woman tells you her age, she'll tell you anything. So you never know what's going to come out of my mouth. But I just want you to know that that some of the things I encountered and some of them I actually created in my entire lifetime, that foundation was going to allow me to develop the skills necessary for my future here in Mary Kay Cosmetics. I began using the products in 1979. Yes, there was a 1979. And yes, we did not have cell phones. And yes, we did not have computers. And I can go on and on. I mean, I wrote my first letter to Mary Kay on my Selectric typewriter, but that's another story for another time. You probably have to go to the museum to find out what that looks like. Okay. So all that to say is 1979. And my consultant actually worked at the same hospital that I did. And she told me several times, oh my gosh, I think you'd be great at Mary Kay. Anybody ever tell you that? Oh, you'd be so and you're like, I don't even know what Mary Kay is. All I know is I want the products and I want it on my face and I want to look cute and I want to feel good. And there you have it. But she told me that over and over again. Well, I, at that point in my life, I was a single mom and had been for almost 12 years. I was working paycheck to paycheck. Every time there was a 10 cent an hour raise. Yes, there were 10 cent an hour raises back then, way back then. Um, and I was insecure. I, I loved being around people. I didn't really know who I was. All I knew is that I was working and I had a daughter that I was going to take care of and do everything that I possibly, possibly could. And, um, and that was one of those encounters that I had created in my own life. But she, she really just loved me. And so what she did is she also bugged me, right? So I knew she was being nice to me and she, you know, but I never really believed a word she said about how awesome she thought I was, but it wasn't until 1986. Okay. So jump ahead. 1986, I had been married a new one year. Um, the Lord has blessed me with my husband, Roland, and, uh, and we blended our family my one daughter, his two kids. So now we had two teenage boys, a teenage daughter, and I was one hot mess. Okay. I'm kind of like, now what do I do? I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> but my beautiful consultant, who's going to make sure that I look gorgeous the rest of my life said, would you just please talk to my director? And I'm like, I don't even know what a director is. Is she your boss? Well, sort of, but not really kind of maybe. Okay. So you know what I'm saying? Our language in Mary Kay is a little different, but all that to say was she was responsible for her consultant and her success. She was going to, she was going to support her and develop her and encourage her. And so her consultant, my consultant said, would you please talk to Norma one more time? Just talk to her once. She just said, I won't ask you ever again. And I, you know, I was married a year. I'm sitting in my new home. The kids are outside. All I heard was, save money. I'm like, sure, I'll talk to her. Why not? Let me see what, you know, I don't know what she could possibly say, but she came and talked to me and I had already told them no a million times, but here was my concern. If I got her to stop asking, then by being with her, she didn't promise me anything. I just figured she'd go away. So was it coincidence or was it Providence that she drove two and a half hours to my home in the Southern suburbs of Chicago from the North suburbs of Chicago and sat at my table and painted a picture that I hope you'll see through my eyes tonight. That picture was an opportunity for change. Now I'd already given myself permission to say yes to a man in my life that I've now been married to almost 38 years by God's grace, right? Beautiful thing, beautiful thing. And, um, and, but did I know then that we were going to be married 38 years? Of course not, you know, because you know what we do more times than not, we look at the reality of our situation or the past 
and we use the past to determine what our future is going to look like. And that was a turning point in my life when Norma came and sat at my dining room table. And the believe it or not, way back yet then, the starter kit was 100. And when I'm recording this, <laughs> it's still just a little over 100 because we got some extra bonuses with the internet and all of that, all the processes, technology that we have in order for us. But it's the same. And that's the beauty of this is I'm telling you about something that proved faithful over all these years. So it began my career or so I thought. I mean, the first five years are kind of a blur because I love playing face. I sold a little bit here and there. It really wasn't about the, you know, me building a business. No comprende build a business. My parents were both traditionalists. You know, they worked outside the home. They came home nine to five. That's it. They were home on the weekends. You know, I don't know anything about building a business and having a business for myself. I was a single mom scraping for everything that I could possibly get and doing things for people that I thought I had to because they were the boss. And now I had this beautiful, you know, five foot 10 gorgeous woman walk into my home and she says, I'm here to help you with your success. And I'm like, she goes, you've been, I've been assigned to you. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. And she said, well, my job is to support you, encourage you, inspire you, develop you, help you grow into everything that God created you to be. And I'm like, I don't even know this lady, you know, <laughs> that was kind of weird, but I'm thinking, what else, what have I got to lose? Because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save money. And what do single moms need to do? I mean, even though I'm remarried, right. I still have the single mom thought process. It's like, I needed to do everything I possibly could to just save money. And I just found out oh, I get my products at the best price possible. I mean, we have the highest commission of any direct selling company. I didn't know that. I'm just thinking, good for me. I'm getting the products I love that's keeping me looking cute for as long as I possibly can for half price. Awesome. All right. Well, I want you to know I went to all the meetings because I, I like to eat. And you know what they did? They met at a restaurant and we had a meal every week. And if you did certain things, she'd even buy the meal. I was like, oh my gosh, you know? So now remember, single mom thought process. I don't have any money. I, it's usually macaroni and cheese and ramen. And now I'm going to a restaurant where I'm actually having a meal, you know, like with dessert and everything. And they served me. I was happy. I know, I know, don't I sound like a knucklehead? But I just have to tell you, it was just, it was my life. I had no idea. You know, I, I was God, little G in my life, the first half. And what he was doing is he was putting people in my life because he had chosen me and he was going to let me know who he was so that I could find out who I was. That was a long time ago. Oh, and it's not, I'm not going to cry. Okay. So, so back to this. Well, I, I just have to tell you that I really, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and about a year after I said, yes to Mary Kay and sign this agreement. And, and, you know, cause this, it's not a contract, it's an agreement. Um, the person who sponsored me into the company left the company. Uh, she had some stuff in her life and she said, you know what? I've got some customers here that really need somebody to take care of them. Would you take care of them? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll take care of them. I'll be happy to take care of them. Well, guess what? She basically handed me her business. Was I really a consultant? <clears throat> okay. But I knew how to get the products for them. And, and I knew how to squirt a bottle and say, put this on, take it off, put this on, leave it on, um, put this on, look at how pretty you look and what color lipstick would you like? Okay. I mean, that's about how I started my career. And five years later, oh, did I tell you that I was working full time and that I had just been newly married and that I had three, uh, two 13 year olds and a 12 year old that were hormonally whacked and had never lived together, right? I mean, we're, we're talking blended family, right? I'm working full-time in a hospital that was an hour and a half away from me. So I'm getting up at the crack of dawn. I'm not a part of the five o'clock club. Mary Kay always said, if you're a part of the five o'clock club, you could actually add like a whole day every week. I just wanted Saturday. I just wanted to get to Saturday, okay? But I, I worked at the hospital. And so I was doing pretty good. I had been promoted over the years, was the operating room supply coordinator, which meant I was taking care of millions of dollars of inventory, millions at this huge hospital. 
I went in on a Friday, called me into the office, let me go. Now, I had been a single mom. What, where was my security? My job. A man is not plan B, right? I'm just saying, I, I just need you all to hear me on that. I, I had, I learned the hard way that, that I could not just rely on that. Within one hour, I lost half of our household income, all of our health insurance, and I did not know what to do. I did not have a college degree. I, I played around with school a couple of years, but I, I was like devastated, but a couple of years, maybe two years before that time, before my husband and I got married, actually, I met Jesus and he like picked me up out of the, bleh, out of the muck, which is probably why I paid attention to Rollin because he wasn't in the muck, but some of the other people that I had left were. And so what I realized was that I could maintain my sense of calmness because I had just enough Mary Kay training to hear, it'll be okay, you know, just take a deep breath, what you think about, you bring about, and you are not going to cry in front of these people. You're just going to take it on the chin. You're going to smile. My manager fell apart. She was a mess. I'm consoling her. All I can think about is what am I going to tell my husband, right? Long story again, got in the car. I was a mess. I just cried. And I'm like, Lord, <laughs> this was not in the plan. All right. You, I, you know, you, I, I just met you. I mean, Lord, I, I'm, I'm a baby believer here. I don't even know what to do. You know, like, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to ask for. I don't know where to go. Who am I supposed to? Oh, I can go to my pastor. Okay. I can go talk to him. That's good. But in the meantime, I didn't even have enough of his word hidden in my heart to know that all things work together for good to those who love him. Right. And I didn't know that I should be thinking about whatever's true, right? Noble, pure, praiseworthy, excellent to think about those things, right? All I'm thinking about is I got three kids at home and a husband who's working his butt off and I don't have a job and I have nothing. I got nothing. I'm terrified. So I just, what, 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 what do you do? You pray, you pray. That's what I did. I, I prayed, right? And I didn't know what I was going to do. But I said, Lord, where, tell me where to go. Who should I go see? What am I going to do? And you know what I kept hearing? Mary Kay. No, Lord, I need a real job. Okay. I mean, I need to, I need some place that's secure and solid and, and that I don't ever have to be concerned about. And, you know, sometimes God gets quiet, you know, it, he, he does, he says, yes, or he says, no, or he says, wait. Well, I'm the one who said no, and I'm not waiting. And I started looking for a job and I'm look, and it was at a time in, in our history. Now, I don't know when you'll be watching this, but all I can tell you is we've just come out of a really tough several years where our economy has been interesting. And um, a lot of people were out of work and then there's people at home and I mean, all kinds of stuff. That's pretty much how it was then. There was, I mean, I think unemployment was like 14% and the interest rates were like ridiculous. There, that's boys and girls. That's one of the reasons it's important to know history, not so that we have to live back there, but we've got to be reminded that we don't have to duplicate it, <laughs> right? We don't have to repeat it. We don't have to repeat it. So all that to say is I ended up believing and I heard him say, Mary Kay, one more time. And guess who I called? Because I was still going to the meetings and I was still, you know, eating the meals and I was still showing up. I wasn't doing a lot, but my director was smart because she also knew that I loved freedom. And she sent me a magazine. We, we've had several throughout the company's history, but one of, this one was called The Challenger. And it was for what at that time was called middle managers. It was women who had a small team and I had one person on my team, like just one, but you know, she said, Oh, I'll save money too. So let's play. And that's good. And, um, so my, the person who was, re, who was helping me, my director, my leader, my business coach, my mentor, right. Sent me this 
magazine. And in there was this little blurb that said, what's your vision? What's your passion? What do you see? What do you want? And I'm thinking, nope, I don't even remember anybody ever asking me that. Or was it that I took my fingers out of my ears and God said, Kat Van Dusen, be still and know that I am God and I know exactly what you need. And it was Mary Kay Ash herself. She was a real person, not like Betty Crocker, okay, who was pretend. Mary Kay was a real person. I met her, got to sit at her feet numerous times. And she said, so what is your vision? What would you love to be? How would you like your life to look? And I was so wrapped up in the doing, even with my new relationship with God and understanding who I was in Jesus Christ and that I had the power in me to really become a new creation. But it was like he used her words to say, think about it, stop a minute. And I sat down at that Selectric typewriter. It was snowing because it was in Chicago. And I typed out who I wanted to be and how I wanted to be a servant leader to women at all levels in this business. And about three weeks later, Norma called me back. That was the, my mentor, my sales director, Mary Kay. And she said, "Your Dallas just called me and they want your picture. And I'm like, why do I, you know, long story again is they published my vision statement and I still have it somewhere, probably in one of Mary Kay's books that I have on my, on my shelf. And they published that. And that was um, December of 1991. I had one person on my team. I had no idea how to run a business. I, I am, if you look at my strengths and, and where I am really like, I'm strategic, but I'm not executing. And I'm, I, I don't have a lot of like numbers. I'm really good with math, but I don't care about details. I mean, I, I'm just, you know, I'm just me. No comprende business, right? I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm gonna change that. But God always knows exactly where we're supposed to go. And she said, just trust me, do the next thing. And, and I'm, I'm going to say something that I don't ever really say to people. I just want you to stop thinking. Okay. Now, I don't mean literally, because we do have to think because that's, that's, I, I'm a thinker more than a feeler, but sometimes we just need to stop thinking and we need to stop being the woman that we've been called to be. And you know, what's going to happen? Activity is going to fall into place and you're going to do what's important. And Six months later, we earned our very first car. The next month I gave my um, letter of intention to go into a leadership position. Four months later, became a sales director, November, 1992. Yes, over, well, depending on when you're watching this, when it's being recorded, I'm in my 30th year as a sales director in Mary Kay Cosmetics. And all I can tell you is that this journey has been incredible. I never traveled before this business. I never knew what California West Coast water would look like off of the reef of Hotel Dell on Coronado Island. But because I was in this business and I said yes, and I showed up, I never knew what it was like to have beignets and hot chocolate in New Orleans. I didn't know what it was like to be at Universal Studios in Disney. I didn't know what it was like to fly. I had never flown before I became a leader in this business. Now, everybody's not called to leadership, but I do believe that everybody's called, period. Is it Mary Kay that you're called to? I don't know. But are you looking for an opportunity where you can have a unstoppable opportunity for growth, an opportunity that will fit your lifestyle because you are in business for yourself, but never by yourself. Would I know that I have girlfriends in almost every state of the United States and in Colombia, because I was able to help Mary Kay actually break into that country. Do I know Spanish? No. Another opportunity that that God brought to me 
I didn't pick Mary Kay. I didn't wake up one day and say, oh my goodness, I'm going to be in Mary Kay Cosmetics for 38 years. I'm going to be in Mary Kay as a sales director for 30 years. And actually that number was wrong on the sheet. We just picked up our sweet 16 career car, which means I've had the privilege of leading the most amazing group of women. The catalysts, it, it stands for, it starts with a K because my name starts with K. It means we change it to C because Jesus Christ is the change agent. He is the one who does it. We are change agents, taking action, leading, yearning stars to success. I don't know what the dream is that you have in your heart. And I could tell you all the other things that it takes along, but I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, well, I've been honest with you the whole time. I don't know why I say that. Sometimes it's just a habit. Let me be real. Everyone of the women that you'll meet in this business are real women with real hope for real change. We know that where you are does not have to be where you remain. And if you love where you are, how much more could you be and be a blessing to someone else? So pray about it. Think about it. Ask the person who invited you tonight. You know what? I I don't know. It sounds so weird. You know, yeah. Do you think a little lipstick can change a woman's life? Yeah, but that's not what it's about. It's because one woman had the courage to believe that God was using her. And because of that one woman, my life has been radically changed. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know how many countless others, but I've had privileges and doors open that I never, ever thought would. And I know he's not done with me yet. After almost 38 years in this business, I know that until Jesus calls me home, I'm going to use me, Mary. I'm going to be using Mary Kay, and I'm going to be sharing her story because my story has been dramatically changed. So, Uni, thank you so much for the privilege of being here tonight. I just appreciate you so much. You're on mute. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, you are phenomenal. I'm going to pin you because I want to talk to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. You said so many wonderful things. I mean, and I know we're going to have questions at the end of this. Oh, oh, oh. All right. What happened? Am I pinned? I'm not pinned. That's okay. Yes. So okay. I need you to know you said so many wonderful things, but the one thing, if I had to condense it to one thing, it was the one statement that you made. Not everyone is called to Mary Kay, but everyone is called. And that's scripture. That's Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and to give you hope and a future. Amen. And you are absolutely right. Thank you so much. I know that time betrays us, but I have to have you back because I love it. this was just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Kat, you are just an amazing woman that I have had the privilege of getting to know. And it has been an honor to know you and to love you and to call you my friend. And I thank you for taking time for doing this uh, today. So with that, I would like to thank each and every person. We're going to let go of everyone on YouTube. And then we're going to stay. So we're going to pause for a moment. We're going to say goodbye to everyone that's on YouTube. But I want you to remember to join us next week on March 7th, where we will have senior national sales director Dawn Dunn as our guest, our special guest. So this was such an amazing opportunity. So whether you are looking for freedom, fun, flexibility. Always remember that when it comes to Mary Kay, the pink possibilities are endless. God bless you. And I pray that you all have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.